welcome to Linda Summers Life After 60. Look and feel fabulous at any age. Okay, so today's video is going to be on self-love, and I am going to give you three tips that I think are really important to begin this self-love journey. There are many tips, but I think these are these three are really good to start off with. So for myself, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I was looking for people and things to feel good about myself. And we can't do that. We can't make other people and things responsible in making us feel good. That has to come from us. We have to fill those voids within ourselves, And we can't have other people and make them responsible for doing that. It's just not gonna work. So we have to begin with ourselves and go on the self-discovery journey of loving ourselves. So, with that being said, the first one is honoring your body. And so it, this is really important because if we don't honor the body, the, we only get one shot at this. This is it. Only one body, can't trade it in, this is it. And so how to begin is what are you eating, right? They said that saying, you are what you eat. That is really true. So um, what are you eating? Are you exercising? If there is something that you don't like about your body, you can change it. You can change it, right? And if there's something like, you know, uh, my wrinkles, I, my thighs, my butt, whatever, right? So wherever your attention goes, energy is flowing. And so it's just going to exemplify whatever you're focusing on. So you can change that, right? Find an exercise routine that you really love and um, start changing up your diet, looking at what is making you feel good, what's making you not feel good, and really kind of you know paying attention, right, to what you are eating and what you're doing and what you're thinking is going to be really, really important. And um, you know, like I said, you only get one shot at this. And it's like, I look at the, the body like a car, right? Well, sort of, I mean, it's a machine. I don't really want to call the body a machine, but it sort of is because it does all this, you know, it's working for us and all we got to do is just walk and talk, right? It's kind of like driving your car. If the engine does all the work, you just get at the wheel and you just point where you want to go. Same thing with us. And I, 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 you know, have known or know people out there or there's, you know, people out there that spend more time on their cars, their boats or whatever, right, versus themselves. And those things are gonna come and go, right? You can trade those in or, you know, even a classic car, you can keep it forever, forever, right? And it may still run, but the body, it's a fact, is going to leave the earth, right? And you come into this earth alone and you will leave this earth alone. So how we take care of it and what we do for it is so important, right? And how we treat it. Which brings me to another point. When you are showering and bathing, it's really taking the time to honor the body, to wash the body. You know, we're in the shower or the bath, we're trying to wash and get out of there so we can get going. No, take the time. This body, be grateful for it, for everything that it does. It gets you where you need to go, right? And so really honor and take the time to acknowledge the body. And I, for me, like I kiss my body and I'm like, I love my body and my body loves me back. So it's really taking that time and really honoring this body and being very, very grateful for what it does for you. Because when you do that, it will give you back that love, right? So, so important. And so the next thing is trusting your intuition this is so important. This is like listening to that soft voice and how you can determine is there's a soft voice and then there's this loud voice, right? That's the ego. You know, the soft voice is like, call this person, go here, do this, do that. The other one, you're a failure. Why are you gonna do that? Didn't work before, don't do it now, right? That's how you can determine which is which. So you really wanna pay attention to that voice that you hear inside. And also, too, like, you can get that feeling, that gut feeling. It's like a sixth sense. It's your higher self. And when you feel something's off, like, in a situation or a person, like, it doesn't really feel good, that's your intuition telling you, nope, 
I go by if it doesn't feel good, then it's not good for me. And that's going to be a no. So really pay attention to that gut feeling and listen to those voices and, you know, have that distinction that you know, okay, that's the voice that's going to prevent me from going forward. This is the voice that's going to have me go. Have you ever been driving and you notice, like, you all of a sudden you get this urge to go right and you're like, well, no, I really wanted to go left. But you go right? Well, there you go. And then you find that, oh, you run into a person or something transpires or something you never saw before and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this existed. That's what you want to do. So that's what you're listening to, learning to trust that intuition. Because the more that you're trusting your intuition, the more that you are trusting yourself, which is really important. You want to trust yourself because the next point is setting boundaries and learning to say no. This is a biggie. How do we even know our boundaries? Well, our emotions are a really good way to start noticing our boundaries, how we feel about things. What are our thoughts, right? How do we think about things? So those are good ways to start to notice to be able to set your boundaries by your emotions and your thoughts. And also what's really key are your values. What are your values? Your values first. You have to know what your values are because if you don't know your values are, then you're going to allow people and circumstances to walk right over you, right? And use you as a doormat. So when you learn what your values are, those are non-negotiables. Those are things that you're like, these are my values. I hold those very high and close to me. And so, and you have a boundary for that. And that boundary is like, nuh-uh, this is it, right? That's just what you have. That's just as really important as know your values. Reflecting on your past, looking at your past experiences and seeing, you can't change those, but looking to see if there were any patterns that you had in your life that you noticed. And hopefully we learn from those, because if you don't learn from those, it is going to come up again and again and again in your life. It may be in a different situation, it may be a different with a different person, but it's gonna keep coming up until you go, ah, okay, I got it, right? And then you're gonna set the boundaries and go, nope, mm -mm, I'm not gonna let this happen again, because now I'm aware. And I did this with a guy that I dated and he taught me self-love. Like, he set his boundaries. He was like, nope, mm -mm. And I was like, wow, like, I... I need to like start doing this myself. I realized he was doing is like this is important. And so I just made it a point to go, you know what? I'm going to know go in, look what my values are and I'm going to start setting my boundaries and learning to say no. So it's really important to pay attention to those patterns if you can look back in your past experiences and see what patterns that you were um, that you were doing and learn from those. Also, what's really important is journaling. Journaling is really important that you can be able to express what you're feeling, your emotions and your thought. And I'm talking about automatic writing. I'm not talking about crossing the T's, dotting the I's, making sure it's got good grammar. I've done this with my clients. It's very effective and it's really important just to journal. Get out what you're feeling. Right? And then you can look back at that and you can go, wow. And you maybe you can start to see patterns from that as well. So you can even do that with your reflecting on your past experiences. You can do that too. So important. So important. Writing is really helpful um, just to be able to express. Also, too, is learning to say no and the fact that if you don't want to do something don't do it. And like I said, I know from me being a people pleaser, I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. I didn't want to cause conflict. I didn't want to do any of this. I sacrificed myself. Even though I didn't want to do something, I sacrificed myself. This is a no-no. This is why setting boundaries and learning to say no is so important. 
knowing our values, trusting our intuition, honoring our body, because if we don't do any of this, then we kind of just let things go and our life is like flailing. We don't know what we're doing. You know, it's just, we're not full, right? We're not, we don't have that self love. So when you learn, when you, there's a situation that you come across and you don't feel it's something that you want to do, come from the heart and let that person know if it's a person, right? If it's a thing, however you can do that. Because what's great about the universe as well, the great universe is great anyway, but the universe will always make it to where it's not going to happen. Because if your emotion is so strong that you don't want to do something, the universe is going to go, okay, this is not going to happen one way or the other. It's either going to be through you, the other person, the thing. Something will occur to where you won't be able to do this. So it's really important to pay attention to how are you feeling and to be able to express that, the coming from the heart. And so that's really looking at I, what I call is conscious living. How are we being, doing, thinking? each and every moment to be very conscious of that eating how are we treating our body what are we saying about our body trusting our intuition all of these go hand in hand and they're all intertwined and interlinked so so important honor your body you only get one shot at this trust your intuition get to trust get to know that get to hear and have this distinction between those voices when you get that gut feeling, honor that gut feeling. That's the truth. That's telling you this is it. Trust that. Setting boundaries, learning to say no, getting your values straight, knowing your values, reflecting on the past, seeing your patterns, and learning from the past, right? And journaling. Journaling is so important. You can learn a lot about yourself in journaling and learning to say no. When you really don't want to do something, learn to say no. And notice if you're trying to be a people pleaser, if you're trying to want people to like you. Because you just showing up as you and being that beautiful, magnificent you, people are going to love you. And if you are just showing up as you and people don't love you, hey, there's a lot of people that don't like me. That's okay. There's a lot of people that do like me, and that's okay. You know what I mean? As long as I love myself, that's what matters. Everything else will fall into place. And when I love myself, that is an outwardly thing and that exudes outwardly. So it's going to bring back to me that love. But we can't make other people responsible for how we feel. So that are that's my three tips for today on self-love that I feel are really important. So don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification so you know when the next videos are gonna be. And thank you so much for tuning in today. I really, really appreciate it, and I will see you on the next video. All right, and remember, you can look and feel fabulous at any age. So thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Love you.